What we all know is that Golang is amazing, but we also forget some cool features from time to time, especially if it comes to compiling your code. And I want to make uh, not a series, but a couple of videos about these um, forgotten features that can help you make your life much easier, right? And nobody talks about it. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to go head first in the pile of shit and show you how it's done. But before we continue, if you're not yet subscribed, you know the drill, consider subscribing because 50% of my viewers are still leeching for no reason at all. Uh, so if you want to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comments. Also jump into the Discord community and learn how to be a Golang professional 24-7. And a selfless, um, a shameless, selfless, a shameless self plug. If you want to learn how to build complete prediction ready Golang applications, hey, check out the link below and get 33% off my HTMX Temple Tailwind Golang DZUI. Replicate AI course. Anyway, let's continue here. Enough bullshit. So basically, I have this uh, very simple uh, application here. Main, wake up. Is it going to print? And what we are going to do is, um, from time to time, if you build these applications, you might have different environments, built environments, right? Maybe on your local machine, you want to execute code, whatever. And on uh, production, you want to execute code, whatever so most of the time you're going to have an environment variable that's basically going to swap if it's dev do this if it's prot do that if it's staging do this you know what i mean so but there is actually a very cool trick in golang that you can use when compiling your code that will basically only compile a certain file and execute it a certain file and which you can call functions on so let me demonstrate this so uh, let's say we're going to have an application and we want to basically people are sending me messages guys i need to get away of this guys if you want to focus turn off your fucking cell phone because it's annoying right so basically we're going to make two files here so i'm going to make a file is going to be uh, let's call this full um, def dot go right and what we're going to do is you can do this we're going to say plus build def I think something like that. Is that not going to work? We don't know. Then we're going to make a package. That's going to be main. And let's make a function here. Let's call it foo. And let's only return a string here. And we are going to return uh, from the dev env. From the dev file or something like that. Right? Boom. Normally, this should actually... Yeah, well, just like that. Right? So basically, these are the tags we need to specify. It's going to hint the compiler. Yo, listen. This only needs to be built in the dev, right? So what this is gonna do, it's basically going to check your files and everything with underscore, everything that has dev um, appended to your underscore, it's going to only compile this thing based on this tag. Amazing, right? So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make a new file and we're gonna call this um, full production or something like that, boom. And then we're gonna actually do some lazy coding. We're gonna copy this, paste that in. Just like that, we're gonna change this up, um, prot, prot, and then we're gonna change this from the prot file, right? So this is basically how it's done, and I'm gonna also gonna show you a real world example of a production user SaaS. Why we, why we should, why this actually could be handy, right? So that's this. So we have basically a foo here, and we have a foo function here. The only difference is that this is going to print from the dev file and this is going to print from the prot file, right? So uh, this is our main. Now we're going to call this function here, right? You're going to say foo, just like that. Actually, we need to do an FMT, right? Uh, FMT, print LN, foo here, boom. Of course, VS Code is basically lacking, so we all should move to the Z editor, but because I don't have a Mac, uh, I'm, I'm fucked, right? I could also use Vim, but then I'm basically three weeks building my configuration file. That's also what I don't want, you know? So basically, this thing, uh, now we're going to build that. How do we do this? I think it's going to be go build uh, minus, actually, uh, we're going to say minus tags. This is very important. Minus tags, and we're going to build it for development right now. So we're going to say dev, and then we're going to basically build uh, the whole shebang here. I think that should work. Press enter. Right, so now we have this foobar um, binary, right? And now we can actually say dot slash foobar presenter. And now you can see, wake up, that's what you need to do. Wake the fuck up. And this is going to be from the dev file, right? So if you want to build this for production, uh, we do this and we're going to say tax prot, do the same thing, dot slash foobar. And now it's telling us from the prot file, right? So the cool thing is that you can have a bunch of codes, and I'm going to show you a very cool example from this, that you can have a bunch of a bunch of logic files, whatever, and you just specify these build tags here, and Golang will not compile these, right? Unless 
the tag matches, right? Uh, so you have you can basically keep your code binary smaller, which is fine, but um, also very handy for different kinds of uh, building, right? Bes different kinds of environments, staging, production, whatever. Okay, so let's basically check out. It's very simple, but you need to know it, right? That's the thing. And if you don't get reminded by this, uh, you basically don't know it. The cool stuff is that I'm actually writing Golang for almost 10 years, and um, I recently started using this because I actually, I, I maybe knew it somewhere in the back of my mind, but now I'm actually in love with it. You know what I mean? Cool. So what is a good use case? <clears throat> Let me go back to see the fanmate here, uh, which is the application. What is fanmate? Well, let me show you here. This is X fanmate. Uh, boom. You see, it's basically this application. It's online, uh, which you can chat with men and girls. And uh, yeah, guys, <laughs> it's your fantasy. I'm not gonna lie. You can do whatever you want, right? Um, <clears throat> so basically, let me show you this here. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me zoom in. Uh, let, let's zoom in MVM here real quick. Look at that. Beautiful, right? Because we're just going to browse code. So basically, we have these two things here, right? Look at this. We have static dev. Actually, can you see this? Static dev and stat static prot, right? So the only thing this is doing, actually, can I zoom in? Look at that. Uh, is basically in, in the dev environment, we are going to have a file server that basically serves the public directory here, right? And if we take a look, at um, the production build, right? We have an embedded file server, right? So why is this? Well, so if we are basically um, in our development environment, we want we don't want static files. We don't well, we don't want com uh, all our files compiled to a binary because then Tailwind can basically not hot reload, basically, right? You know what I mean? It's it's just it's a binary. We can't. So that's why uh, in the development environment, we use a normal file server. So when Tailwind compiles our file on changes, it's instantly can hot reload and can reflect the changes in our browser. But in production, we don't want to hassle. And then we can just, with the cool feature of Golang, we can just embed the whole public folder and have all our assets, all our static assets uh, compiled into our binary, right? So that's basically for me one of the for now one of the best use cases I ever came up with. Of course, you guys will probably also know some cool stuff you can do with this. So that's basically it. So in this in this case, it's basically build this always unless it's dev, right? It's just another syntax -y something you can do also. All right. So that's basically it, guys. Um, I hope you had something about this video. Very simple video, but hey, just a, a small reminder, small reminder for two things that you can do this stuff and that you need to wake the fuck up. Thanks for watching this video, and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my live streams or future videos. Love you all.